Now we spent an awful lot of time in this unit talking about birth rates and death rates and how that affects population in different countries. But there's also another key aspect of population, another key thing that affects um, the, the rise and a fall in a country's population, and that is migration. Um, and different countries have different policies um, about migration. Uh, USA is the key example that we use. Uh, the USA is a country that has been built uh, on, pop on um, immigration. Um, there's been some sort of immigration policy in the United States for the last 200 or so years. Um, and of course, the, a, a very high profile example of this, if you look at uh, the US President Barack Obama, his father was an immigrant into the USA and he's managed to become the most powerful man in the world. So it's very, very important in shaping American culture, but also very, very important in uh, shaping the size of the country's population. Um, now, immigration is often seen in a very negative way. Um, when we talk about immigration, um, the first words that often come into people's minds are illegal immigrants, smuggling, hiding under a lorry, and it's just simply not the case. It's a lot more than that. Illegal immigration makes up a very small part, particularly of the UK's uh, immigrants. Most immigrants to the UK have permission to be here and they, they have a vital role in our society in doing jobs, in paying taxes and, uh, and, and keeping the country going in the same way that other people do. So it's very important to remember that immigration is often about work, immigration is often about people who have been given permission by a country. But why America? America has what we call the American dream, an idea of what you're going to find when you get to America. And for many Mexicans, the American dream is, is a key pull factor. Things about America that make people want to go there. Two more key terms, pull factors, the other one's push factors. Things about Mexico that make people, that make Mexicans want to leave. Pull factors, things about the USA that make them want to go to America. And they will go through a whole number of different uh, ways of trying to get over to America if they don't have permission. For instance, as you can see in these pictures. Now, the United States only lets a certain number of immigrants in each year. A lot of them uh, are not Mexicans, but it doesn't stop the Mexicans trying to get over the border. And the United States spends a lot of money each year trying to control that and trying to control the flow of, of uh, immigrants. A quote here from ex-president Bill Clinton, um, which uh, pretty much states the, the strength of feeling that America and American history has about immigration and how it sees it as one of its strengths, one of its core things that have built the nation up. Um, there's more legal immigrants settled in the United States than any other country of the world. In fact, 12.4%, maybe a little bit more now, uh, of the population are immigrants from a whole number of places around the world. Europe, um, Jews from Europe uh, in the 1930s and 1940s escaping persecution, uh, the black communities uh, in America who go back to um, history in slavery, the Hispanic, Spanish people, uh, Spanish speaking um, uh, people in, in, in the United States coming from Central and South America, just to name but a few. And you can see here on this graph how immigration has, has changed over the years from 1820 through to 1840 into the 1900s there was a very sharp spike in immigration and around about 1940 there was a drop in immigration because of course there was the second world war going on as soon as that finished as you can see immigration started to pick up again um, now uh, we looked in the lesson 
at uh, what the rules are for people coming in to America. And it's basically about having skills. Have you got something to offer the country? And we went through these two different couples here and we decided whether they should or whether they shouldn't enter. Uh, so again, just have a look through the information here and start to think about if if you were in charge, if it was you making the decision, would you let these people in, would you not let them in, and why. If you need to, you can go back over the information on page 155 in the textbook. Um, also, uh, the advantages and disadvantages of uh, immigration. So wages overall, for instance, are forced down uh, because you'll have immigrants, particularly from Mexico, willing to work for such low wages. Um, one of the advantages, though, are that a lot of those foreign workers will fill the low, unskilled job roles that normal Americans don't want to do. Have a look at this. Discuss it with someone. Think about what else goes where. What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Make sure, though, that you can explain and justify your reasons. Um, and also, America isn't the only country to have a immigration policy. Russia and the UK, for instance, also have an immigration policy. And this task here might be a very interesting one for you to do if you're looking for those higher grades, the A stars and the A's. Uh, being able to compare and contrast Russian and UK's immigration policies and be able to justify an opinion about which one you think is best and why.